Good morning, happy Sabbath. Good evening from wherever you're watching us from. Again, we are still doing the three angels message. The hour of his judgment is our study this week. We are on week six or rather lesson six. So before we go on, I'd just ask my consistent panelists to say hi again and just say their names for the sake of the person who's joining us for the first time. Mm -hmm. Praise God, everyone. Amen. Glad that you've joined us today. My name is Jess Rono. I'm glad to be studying the Word of God with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jess. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, a good day. My name is Jafet Rono. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. My name is Onsongo Rafael Nyamisoa. It's a pleasure to be here. I am Rumona. I am really happy to be part of this discussion. And I'd ask that Rafael, please, to open for us with a word of prayer. Uh, let's humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Our kind and loving Father and Master, what in heaven, we humbly come before you this blessed day, thankful for another opportunity to study your word. Our desire, dear Lord, is that you may grant us, dear Lord, to behold you high and lifted up, working throughout eternity, working throughout history, and working even in our lives, O oh Lord. Grant us your Holy Spirit to open up the uh, Holy Scriptures to us. Our prayer as we begin until the very end, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So our key text comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse, chapter 13, verse 11 and through 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And do this knowing the time that it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. And this week, as I said, we are studying this day or rather from the week we've studied about the hour of his judgment. And we're going to go through our lesson and see what is the hour of his judgment? Last week we are talking about the good news of judgment, you know. So now we are talking about the hour of his judgment. And we'll start from the Sunday part where it talks about the cleansing of the sanctuary. Dear beloved, just uh, to get you up started or to jump start our our lesson is that we are going to really dwell in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. So it is important that even after this study, you just go and study that book. And yeah, you could ask questions and even form a Bible study because I know it's not easy to understand on your own. So now, um, according to Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, Japheth, um, there's an event that marks the beginning of the judgment, and it is just the cleansing of the sanctuary. Could you please talk to us about it? Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. In the previous um, uh, lesson, uh, last week, we had gone through a study of Daniel chapter 7, mm -hmm. and we had gone through a review of um, the beasts, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the four creatures, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the strange creature with ten horns, mm -hmm. and then there was a judgment, mm -hmm. and then Christ's kingdom mm -hmm. was established. Mm -hmm. Uh, then uh, we know uh, uh, the prophecies of Daniel, they normally um, they go over the same ground with each other. So Daniel 2 goes over the same ground as Daniel 7. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and they all begin uh, and end around the same way. They all end with Christ's kingdom being established. Mm -hmm. So Daniel 2, Christ's kingdom is established by the stone that uh, goes all over the earth. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7, Christ's kingdom is established once the judgment has been given to the saints. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel chapter 8 we have uh, a study of um, the, uh, those beasts. Mm. We have a, stu um, a study of um, a ram, and then a he goat, and then the he goat's um, horn um, uh, grows and grows and grows, and then afterwards mm -hmm. there is this discussion mm. of um, the, uh, 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 the 2,300 days. Mm. Now let us study Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Mm. It says, and he said unto me, uh, because there's a question in Daniel 8, 13, how long um, shall the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of des desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And then the response, he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, uh, in some Bibles actually it would say evening mornings, 
as other translations, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Mm. And then afterwards, if you go on, you find that just after that event is the establishment of Christ. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, 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 if we can uh, try and uh, put Daniel 8 and 7 side by side, mm -hmm. you find that the judgment of Daniel chapter 7 mm -hmm. coincides with this particular mm -hmm. event, the cleansing of the let's mm -hmm. describe here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, 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 both visions end at the same place, which mm -hmm. is Christ's kingdom being mm -hmm. established. Mm -hmm. And so from, from there we can actually be certain that Daniel 8.14 is actually deeply connected with the work of the judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the cleansing of the yeah, sanctuary? The sanctuary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 in brief, there yeah, was a sister, sanctuary. I'm oh. sorry to interrupt, yes. but if you could talk about the earthly sanctuary and then the heavenly sanctuary. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. So what is the cleansing of the sanctuary? Mm -hmm. um, uh, we know that in the book of Exodus 25 verse 8, Exodus 25 verse 8, you have a command from God to Moses. He says that make all these things, make me a sanctuary, um, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And then Exodus 25 verse 40, after a very uh, detailed description of various, various things, and I really urge you to take time to study uh, verse 9 until verse 39 of Exodus 25. Verse 40, we are told, Look that thou make them after the pattern which was shown thee on the mount, which gives us a, a, an idea that the sanctuary on earth was a replica of the sanctuary in heaven. Mm -hmm. This is what Paul to confirm mm -hmm. the book of Hebrews chapter 8 mm -hmm. verse 1. Five. We are told that the ministration of the priest on earth was actually just a type, mm -hmm. a small symbol of the one that is found mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. So now we know that the earthly sanctuary also was cleansed mm -hmm. because the earthly sanctuary was constantly being defiled. Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. Every single time that a sacrifice was made on earth, before Christ had come to die mm -hmm. and be the ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. every single time, uh, and you can find this in the book of Leviticus chapter 4, for instance, one, one example of a sacrifice is being brought. The person who has sinned brings the sacrifice, the mm -hmm. lamb. Then the person who has sinned lays hands upon the sacrifice in effect transferring his sins mm -hmm. to that particular sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? That person who has sinned kills that animal and then the priest takes the blood and then sprinkles it in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. In effect transferring the sins of the sinner to the to, to the, the sanctuary, sanctuary, correct? Yeah, yeah. And so in effect, the person was cleansed, mm -hmm. but the, sin, the sanctuary was, was, you could say, defiled. I use that in a very soft language. You yeah. are talking about blood being sprinkled. Yes. So I can imagine, you know the way blood smells. Yeah. <laughs> so really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but in effect, you see, like, that's almost like a physical representation of what is trying to be typical, yeah. which is that, that that place is mm -hmm. as the person is being cleansed. Mm -hmm. And that would happen constantly every single uh, day, day in and day out. Both the morning and evening sacrifices mm -hmm. and individual sacrifices of those people who have sinned. Mm -hmm. So that constant sacrifice that is going on morning and evening is cleansing the people but, uh, but defiling, so to speak, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Then on one particular day the sanctuary is mm -hmm. On Leviticus chapter 16, mm -hmm. uh, we find that description of the day of atonement when the sanctuary it cleansed. Mm. Now, that is what we are told will happen in heaven in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Mm. We are told that the sanctuary in heaven mm. will be cleansed. Mm. Now, at what particular Mm. At a particular point in, in earth history, mm. the sanctuary will be cleansed. Mm. And, and the same way that uh, uh, day in and day out, our sins are being transferred to the sanctuary, so to speak, in heaven. Mm. Uh, not like uh, in a literal way, mm. but in the description that we gave last, mm -hmm. um, the last session, where our records are in heaven, but against our records is written the word forgiven. forgiven. That's what it means that our sins are transferred mm. uh, in heaven, so to speak. It means that our records are, are declared forgiven. Mm. But those records are still there in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now there shall come a point of settling all those records. Mm -hmm. That is uh, 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 what it means that the sanctuary will be cleansed. Mm -hmm. in fact. Thank yeah. you. So you've talked about to us about atonement and atonement was not just any other day and especially to the Jewish culture. It was such an important day for them. And I'll, I'll move to, to Jess and ask um, you know the prophecy of 2000 300 days as mentioned in the book of Daniel chapter 8 confused Daniel a bit and he had to pray and ask for clarification why was he confused if I may ask mm -hmm. I think um, firstly I think we must remember that um, Daniel goes um, Daniel is living in captivity mm. 
um, that when the children of Israel, uh, according to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 36, after they had seen God took them into captivity, mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar came and carried them. And Daniel was among the nobles of the children of Israel mm -hmm. who were taken into captivity. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah had prophesied and told them, you will, be, you will go into captivity. And after 70 years, you will stay in captivity for 70 years. Mm -hmm. So the time of, of, the, of the suffering and the tribulation of God's people in captivity had been determined. Mm -hmm. and, and Daniel, being a keen reader, mm -hmm. had known that they will suffer in captivity for a select period of time, a mm. period that God has already determined for their suffering mm. in captivity. Mm. And him going to God in prayer and spending time with God, God gives to him, gives him a vision. And it is a vision that spreads over a period of time longer than he had anticipated. Mm -hmm. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, he sees um, different kingdoms rise rising and falling and he's seeing the, he's seeing the people of god suffering mm -hmm. being trodden under mm -hmm. as as the word that is used in daniel 8 mm -hmm. and when he hears saints speaking to each other and one one saint asks, asks another you know how long will the children of god suffer how long mm -hmm. will they be trodden under foot mm -hmm. how long will this suffering continues and daniel uh, standing there listening to the response he has and to 2,300 days. And Daniel understanding prophecy that a day is, um, a, for, for each day that God has given us prophetically equals a year. I think we reviewed that in Numbers 14, mm. 34 and Ezekiel mm. 4, 6 previously. Mm. He was shaken that God, we are going to suffer for 2,000 300 years. years. Yeah. I thought you said it was 70, 70. years. Mm. And he was, he, was, he was traumatized. He even fainted. Mm. He thought, surely, God, we, may, we have sinned, but mm. you already appointed a time. Mm. God, you're faithful. You're not the kind of God who gives a word and then takes back his, mm. your word. Mm. You're not the kind of God who changes his mind. The mm. Bible says that. Mm. How come we are going to suffer for 70 years? Are we going to be in... It means for Daniel, he must have thought it means our children our children children's children will be born into captivity for a, for a very long mm -hmm. time by the time we go back to jerusalem mm -hmm. and that's why it was very confusing for him mm -hmm. him he thought it was the suffering of the children of god mm -hmm. in captivity mm -hmm. not for the longer period of time mm -hmm. that we are now going to examine to see that mm -hmm. god was speaking for things that will happen in the latter, in the days. latter days yeah thank you so much for bringing out that clear so that even if someone else has been had been confused like daniel can now understand that what it meant 70 years in captivity and the 2300 years that we are going to look at not years but days sorry now why is it important for us christians especially to understand the concept of the judgment and cleansing of the sanctuary in relation to christ's death at the end of the world because sometimes we study the world but we i think people have this um habit of selecting what they want to study and especially they're looking for the message that speaks to them and mm. in the uh, while doing that you find out that you negate or just ignore intentionally the other parts of the bible that are so important and one of them is the sanctuary message why is it important for us to understand the cleansing of the sanctuary yeah uh, indeed uh, as uh, Japheth has alluded uh, before uh, rather I explained not mm. even alluded um, the sanctuary was something that god uh, gave uh, indeed uh, in another text david says thy way O lord is in the, the sanctuary, sanctuary. and so mm -hmm. in looking at the sanctuary we see the plan of salvation mm -hmm. um, the sanctuary tells us that god is a master architect mm -hmm. and through the sanctuary story its ordinances and its services he a his aim is to show us one the magnitude of sin and two his plan for our salvation mm -hmm. in that as just has uh, referred to uh, in our previous lesson uh, about christ as a lamb mm -hmm. slain you know, that whole sac sacrificial system, mm. Christ was the lamb. You see in uh, John chapter 1 and verse 27 and in John 1, 36, when the Baptist sees Christ coming, he says, behold, the lamb of God. 
that takes away the sin of the world. And mm -hmm. so we see scripture is, 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 is rich with sanctuary language mm -hmm. and salvation mm -hmm. is, is simply the outworking of, of the sanctuary, sanctuary theme mm -hmm. uh, in, through, uh, through, throughout history. And so um, the sanctuary is important in that as we read in Hebrews uh, chapter 8 and verse 5, and as Japheth has also told us uh, from the book of Exodus, that the sanctuary was made after the pattern that mm -hmm. God showed. Mm -hmm. And, and it speaks to us and it tells us that there's even a sanctuary in heaven, like the sanctuary in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, the sanctuary on earth was modeled and, 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 and patterned after that. And we see even uh, generally in the book of Hebrews, Christ is, spoke, is, is, is called our high priest. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews chapter 4, we are told we, don't have, a, we have a high priest that mm -hmm. is acquainted with our feelings, mm -hmm. that, that walks this earth, that was tempted as we are, mm -hmm. yet without sin. And mm -hmm. so... Um, sanctuary language and, and, and sanctuary themes are, 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 are everywhere mm -hmm. throughout the Bible. And mm -hmm. so uh, we see in, the, in, 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 in Scripture once again that the prayers of the saints rising up like what? Like, mm -hmm. sweet, like sweet, sweet incense. incense. So the sanctuary theme is important mm -hmm. and it's very, is, 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 is closely tied to the judgment and, uh, and, 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 and to in that once every year mm. at the end uh, as one of the final um final uh things that were done the final services of the sanctuary was the day of atonement mm. and in the day of atonement we would see uh, what would happen is that throughout the throughout the year as the people are coming and uh, slaughtering these animals mm. slaughtering this 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 sacrifice mm. which are pointing to the, the cross christ the blood was being sprinkled in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. in the veil before the sanctuary. And mm -hmm. sometimes the high priest himself also ate part of the meat, mm -hmm. in essence showing uh, that he bore the sin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he was also carrying the sin himself in his body. Mm -hmm. And so there was this necessity of once in a year that the sanctuary and the priest themselves also do what? Get cleansed. Mm -hmm. That these this sins uh, be transferred mm -hmm. and they would bring a scapegoat, Azazel, um, uh, on whom now the, 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 the sins would be transferred and mm -hmm. the scapegoat will be led by the hand of a, of, a, of, a, of a strong man into the wilderness, therefore showing that the sins have now been removed. Mm -hmm. That is the, the Day of Atonement. It's, uh, it's an interesting story, which I believe uh, if you have time, the reader can mm -hmm. consider it from the book of Exodus and the books of Leviticus, mm -hmm. uh, how that whole system was. But in the Day of Atonement, the sanctuary was being cleansed. Mm -hmm. The sanctuary was being cleansed. Mm -hmm. In the context of Daniel uh, chapter 8 and, and, uh, and Daniel 7, and all the way to Daniel 9, we see Daniel seeing many things happening. He sees kingdoms rising and he sees uh, religio, political, religio, uh, religious powers, religio political powers uh, med meddling in the affairs of mankind and even mm -hmm. to, the ex to a certain extent in the affairs of God. And it calls for judgment. It calls for judgment. It calls for a time in which now the records of this earth uh, are to be the accounts of this earth are, are to be settled, and that this is the day of atonement. And uh, and so he speaks and says, uh, the and to 2,300 days, mm -hmm. then shall the sanctuary be, be cleansed. cleansed. And mm -hmm. we see, as Jess has also told us, uh, from Daniel 7, we see animals are what kingdoms. Mm -hmm. uh, we see animals, uh, Daniel, I think, 7 and verse, and verse 15. Uh, he says the, the animals, as we saw, it's refer in reference to kingdoms. And these kingdoms are actually uh, broken down very well in Daniel chapter 8. Mm -hmm. He even mentions Medo-Persia. Mm -hmm. And we see all these things. So the aspects of that, of, 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 that, uh, of, that, uh, of the prophecy which he understood, but the aspects of the prophecy that we did not understood are the aspects that were concerning the cleansing of the sanctuary mm -hmm. and the 2300 days. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, those are the aspects that now, Gabriel comes and explains uh, mm -hmm. in Daniel chapter 9, mm -hmm. and, uh, which I think uh, are the core themes that we are going to look at. But just mm -hmm. to answer your question, mm -hmm. um, the cleansing of the sanctuary and the judgment are significant mm -hmm. in that uh, the cleansing of the sanctuary happened at the Day of Atonement, and the Day of Atonement mm -hmm. was the day in which all the sins mm -hmm. were removed uh, and, uh, and, and, and were transferred to the, to the he goat uh, or to the, to the scapegoat. And so um, uh, in mo more or less, uh, there are the events which are synonymous and they overlap and as we shall continue with the lesson we shall see this being expounded yeah thank you and i think for me it's it's really important that we understand the concept of the cleansing of the sanctuary because it tells it it literally explains to us the work of salvation mm -hmm. what christ bore for us and just moving to the mind part and still on the 
2,300 days and the end of time. Um, I'm going to ask you this because it's you who brought us here, or rather who drove us to the, the, the days. And I'm going to ask, um, what is the, like, these days that were being referred, you've told us that it was not the days of captivity. So explain to us, these days, what are they, who are they going to apply to? Yeah. You know, I think, I find it exciting mm. when, for especially for how my mind thinks, to see that um, God gives a timeline. Mm. You know, I, I was having a meeting with um, these friends of mine here and um, we were discussing about some plans we are putting in place and um, I kept on asking them, so what is your timeline? Mm. And mm -hmm. tell me when you're going to deliver mm. this thing and this mm. thing and mm. this thing. And, and they kept laughing that I was very strict on asking for timelines, which mm. I failed on. But God, on this one, will not fail on. Mm. That God not only tells us that he's going to give us a judgment, but gives us a timeline time for line. it, you know. Mm. Because the judgment here, before it is even described in the book of Daniel 8.14, which I think I've alluded to, um, in, in verse 13, it, when these two beings are speaking to each other, it says, Then I had one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint, which speak, How long? Mm shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. It looks like the same question that is asked by the, the Christians who we see in the fifth seal. You know, God, how long will mm. we suffer? How long? You know, the Bible says that it is under great tribulation that we shall enter the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It is after great suffering. Mm. And it is as though God actually says... The iron will be heated, mm. but for a period. It will not be heated ag after a certain temperature. I have estimated the temperature which my people can bear, and I will not. They, it will not go further than that. Mm -hmm. The same way we said the other day that when God said that the church of Smyrna will suffer, he appointed the time, said it is only 10 days. So this time God gives a timeline and says that... This, the, the vindication of my people, the mm. suffering of my people will end mm. and I'm going to vindicate them. And it, the, now the verse 14 responds, it says, it will be unto 2,300 mm. days. Um, the Bible t um, tells us that when the children of Israel were walking um, into, were going into captivity mm. and God tells them, you know, you will be there you will go for it, it, it will take you 40 years, but each day for a year. When, when Ezekiel was um, being told to sh shown to signify um, again how long God is going to take, again, when he was um, judging the children of Israel in captivity, told um, Ezekiel, lie down for 390 days for on one side and then on the other side, mm -hmm. and each day for a year in mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And when we are um, examining apocalyptic prophecies, while it is not necessarily said that each day for a year, we use the same principle laid back in the Bible previously, mm -hmm. that each day for a year, it means each year that God gives, it is 2,300 years. And in the book of Daniel chapter 8, um, having seen the kingdoms that first rise and knowing when these kingdoms rise, we first see um, Medo-Persia, then we see Greece ruling mm -hmm. for a period of time and they are trodding under the foot of God's children. Then we see the judgment coming. So we know the judgment must come first of all mm -hmm. after these kingdoms have ruled, not before mm -hmm. as, as maybe the lesson was um, also bringing out when it was referring to some people who think that these days were literal, but mm. cannot be literal because they must come after a period of time. Mm. And to 2,300 years, in Daniel chapter 9, I think that is where we, we go deeper into describing when this, when this time begins. But because I know we are going to, do, to look at this um, much further in the next session, mm. the Bible says that it begins when first the command starts going out we start counting. First know that you will, you will remember that the kingdoms must rule and fall mm. before the judgment mm -hmm. begins. But then after that, you will start, start counting when the command goes out that we um, 
that we should rebuild and restore Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that is in Daniel chapter 9, when Artaxerxes gave that command, mm -hmm. then at that point, we start counting when the 2,300 years begin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you still dwell in the book of Daniel chapter 8, um, there's a vision there. Japheth, there's a whole vision of a ram, a god, and a horn. Please, uh, you know we've gotten to that place where people usually just get afraid <laughs> of the symbols of the of the symbols of the animals. You know we are there. Please help us understand these symbols that are found in the book of Daniel chapter eight. There is a male. There is a ram first of all, and the ram is so that we just. Uh, Daniel chapter 8 verse 6, it says, Then he came to the ram and had with, that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran at him with a furious power. My point is just to bring out the ram. Um, the ram start, start, appears in the, start appearing to us from verse 4, right? Uh, verse 4, verse 5, yeah. And then there's another one, the goat, the male goat. Verse 8 of Daniel chapter 8. Therefore, the male goat grew very great, but when he, came, he became strong, the large horn was broken, and in place of it, four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven. And then there's also the horn, the little horn. What do they, you know, this is an explanation by the, the archangel, Gabriel. He's come. Daniel has prayed for 21 days that, please, I need to understand this. And God sends Gabriel to do what? To give this explanation. From your reading, from your understanding, what do these three things represent? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, actually, um, in general, uh, prophecy is difficult, yeah. but Daniel 8 is so nice because we are, mm. uh, as my brother Raphael told us, we are given ex exactly who those um, mm. uh, beasts represent. Mm. So in Daniel chapter 8 verse 4, we are told, I saw a ram pushing westward and northward and southward. Um, uh, uh, that ram that had um, uh, two horns, and the high horn was... Um, uh, um, one horn was higher than the other, but the higher came up last. We are told explicitly what those horns and, and, and that beast represents. In Daniel chapter 8, reading in verse 20. Daniel 8 verse 20, we are told, The ram which thou sowest, uh, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Mm -hmm. and in fact, historically, uh, 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 Middle Persia as one power uh, did have the higher horns, the most powerful kingdom, which is Persia, come up last. In, that's why, in fact, when historically, People forget about the kings of media. When, when people actually just think about the Persian Empire um, uh, in their minds, because the higher horns, mm. the median, uh, the Persian line of, of power actually came up last and now took over that kingdom and um, reigned. Mm. And then afterwards, we are told in prophecy that a he goat comes up, uh, verse 5, and he goat comes from the west. It does not even touch the ground. The he goat has a notable horn between his eyes. And, and then he destroys the ram, uh, in summary. And then afterwards, uh, he was, uh, verse 8, the, uh, this he goat works very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and out of it came four notable hounds, uh, once towards the four winds of heaven. Again, we are told explicitly mm. what this kingdom is. Mm. In Daniel 8 verse 21, mm. the rough goat is the king of Grecia mm. and the great horn between his eyes is the first king. Mm. So that's exactly what it is. And uh, now first is not in the strict first sense, you know, mm. like um, right now we have a first lady. Mm. Now the first lady is not the oldest person, the lady on earth. She's mm. not the, the first person who existed. She's first in terms of preeminence, mm. right? Mm. And the same way, this first king is the, is the most preeminent king of this power, Grisha. And, mm -hmm. and it's a, um, he's an individual who so many people know. His name is none other than Alexander, Alexander the Great. The Great. Mm -hmm. And uh, through his conquest, he was able to overcome the king of Persia, the kings of Persia, mm -hmm. and uh, establish the supremacy of the Grecian Empire. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, in his greatness, he actually died um, just after conquest, when he was coming back, um, even without reigning for so long. And afterwards, Almost immediately after his death, his kingdom mm. of Grisha was broken up into um, uh, pieces. First, there were five, and the five eventually uh, merged into four powers. Um, and uh, uh, just as prophecy had, had mm. predicted. Mm -hmm. and then afterwards, we are told that, um, uh, as you described, a notable horn comes up. 
mm. and this vegetable horn comes up and we are told verse 10 uh, it works great even to the host of heaven it cast them to the ground and stamped on them and he magnified himself even to the prince of the host even to Jesus and by him the daily was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down mm. and an army a host was given unto him verse 12 against the daily by reason of the transgression and he cast it down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered mm -hmm. we are told explicitly in verse 23 um, uh, now an understanding an explanation from gabriel we are told in the latter days of of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce countenances and understanding dark sentences shall come up his power shall be mighty but not of his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully he shall practice and prosper and what how, what came historically after the kings of grisha mm -hmm. the roman power mm -hmm. and so the roman power we are told um, it works as great um, uh, 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 horizontally and then vertically. Um, uh, so first it establishes itself politically and then it actually goes up towards the, the, the prince of the host and even starts the, uh, uh, attacking God's uh, system and God's power. Mm. And that's exactly what you find historically, that Rome had two phases. The first phase uh, was um, uh, the pagan phase of Rome, mm. when Rome was just a political entity. Mm -hmm. um, and was, and it, it was so powerful, it worked so great. As I said before, um, Daniel 8 has a corollary in Daniel chapter 7, that um, the various powers are actually uh, corresponding to each other. So uh, in Daniel chapter 8, actually, we find the power that's described in, in Daniel 7 as the 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 beast that has ten ten horns, ten horns. yeah mm. and that's exactly the same power that you find here amen. and that's the roman power amen thank, thank you. you and in john chapter 13 verse 17 we are told if you know these things blessed are you if you do them so there's that part of us just knowing the meaning of the ram the meaning of the he got the meaning of even the little horn but which side are you on are you on the side of these um, political kingdoms or are you on the side of God? Um, now we move to the, just the part, a rather interesting topic altogether, the angel's instruction to Daniel. Uh, brethren, it is just good to remind us that we are delving in the book of Daniel chapter 7, 8, and 9. So please just stay with us there. And the first question that I'd ask or I'll ask uh, Raphael, in this book of Daniel chapter 9, considering chapter, chapter 9 verse 24 all the way to 27, what is the significance? Um, there's a specific instruction that, uh, let me just read Daniel chapter 9 verse 23, there's a specific instruction that is given to Daniel by Gabriel, and he said, and he informed informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, have, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. There is that part of where Daniel has been praying. Like we said, you are just, Daniel chapter 9 actually is just a prayer. And now the, the angel has come. And he comes with a specific instruction that he's come to give him what? Skill to do what? To understand. And to understand the meaning of the cleansing of the sanctuary of Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. At the end, there is this vision that the angel is referring to in Daniel chapter 9, verse 23. Consider the matter and understand the vision. Why, what is the significance of that, that statement? Consider the matter and understand the vision. What, what is really important for? Why is it really important that he considers it and understands it? Okay. Indeed, um, mm. basically... Um, we understand that uh, when that the book of Daniel was being written, it was written uh, as one book. Mm. It's one book. Mm. It's only later on uh, in history that uh, when the people were organizing, scholars were organizing the Bible, that they broke it down into verses and chapters. Mm -hmm. And um, therefore, um, this is uh, the book of Daniel is just one book. Mm. And so, uh, when Daniel is is what what is being referred to in Daniel chapter nine is the same things that Daniel had seen mm. in chapter 8. Mm. And uh, Gabriel, the aspects that Gabriel is referring to are the aspects that were not clear to Daniel. Mm -hmm. And that what aspects were not clear to Daniel? We've seen, Japheth has broken it down to us, that the, the aspects of the, those other kingdoms he understood. He understood Perfect, about yeah. the Mid Midopagia. Mm -hmm. Those things were very clear in the vision. Mm -hmm. But there, there's this other aspect of the 2300 days. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and the cleansing of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. that vision that uh, and, and and its timeline. That was the aspect that Daniel was Did perplexed about. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was the aspect uh, that he he didn't understand. And this is the aspect that Gabriel was tasked. It shows us that that message was important to the extent that Gabriel himself is sent to make Daniel understand. And it and it also tells us that. Uh, Another principle that we could learn from it is that if there is a truth in scripture that we are struggling with, that sometimes some of these revelations can only come to us in answer through, mm -hmm. in, as an answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. That we need to apply ourselves through prayer mm -hmm. uh, to join Bible study with prayer. Amen. That, you see, Daniel didn't understand this thing and mm -hmm. he didn't just go away, mm -mm. but he did what? He, he prayed, prayed about it. Mm -hmm. He prayed about it. And so to those of us who perhaps have difficulty understanding certain aspects of prophecy, as mm. you've said, uh, sometimes maybe when, whenever we hear of beasts and all, all these things, we, we, we turn off. Maybe the challenge for us is to ask the Holy Spirit to give us a new heart. To appreciate these Bible truths for what they truly are. Mm. They're wonderful gems mm -hmm. that restore and actually uh, encourage our faith in Christ. They tell us that we are not mistaken. They tell us that, uh, that we serve a God who not only expects us to follow him by faith, but also gives our faith some evidence, some, 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 some backbone mm. by which we can, we, can, we, can, we can stand and say, indeed, mm. we serve the true God. Amen. Because history mm. tells us. Um, in Isaiah uh, 46 verse 9 and 10, he says, uh, there is no other God except me, and you will only know that I am the true God through the instrument of prophecy, because I can tell you the end from the beginning. Amen. And so, in mm. Daniel chapter 9, he starts telling us the times of the end. Yeah. It, um, it, 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 he's breaking down to Daniel the visions of the end and, 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 of, the uh, and of the time of, of the end and the time of judgment. Mm. And so... Yeah, and he speak, as he speaks to him, he says, I am come forth to show you, for thou art greatly beloved. Mm. And therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. So you must study the, the matter. You must consider it for you to understand it. We must mm. be acquainted with these things. Amen. We must study these things. Mm. And then prayerfully considering them as, as God will break it down for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when before we close the, uh, the previous lesson, we talked about prayer and prophecy and judgment, I think now we are seeing it being applied really well. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask you this, there's the 70 weeks that is found in the book of Daniel chapter 8, and then there's this 2,300 days. These two, are they linked? Is there, what is their significance? Is there a similarity between these two uh, particular days, the two twenty, tw these particular numbers, the 70 weeks and the 2,300 days? Mm -hmm. when the prophecies are first um, the vision are first given mm. he sees the visions of, 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 two, of two beasts and then of a little horn mm. and then all of that is described very well in, in, in the book of um, Daniel chapter 8 mm. we, we've seen that we knew what was the first beast, we knew what was the second beast, we end up knowing what is the little horn and the, the descriptions of it and what ends up happening but what made Daniel to even faint because he did not receive understanding of part of the vision, which is the 2,300 days mm -hmm. that was not explained. And so when, when, when Gabriel is coming here to actually speak to Daniel, he's, he's giving him comfort because he had been sick. He had been troubled that this, God, you give me a part of the vision, but mm -hmm. there's a part of the vision that, that, is not that I've not understood. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe something we've not mentioned is how Gabriel refers to Daniel. Mm -hmm. You know, he calls yeah. to him, beloved. You exactly. know, you are beloved of heaven. Mm. The, the, the other time we've, we hear this phrase being described is when God is talking about his own son, Christ Jesus, say, mm. this is my beloved son. Mm. Such words being applied to a mortal, Imagine. you know. Mm. And, and Christ writes in the book of Revelation, says that if you open the door and I, I, you allow me to come in, mm. I'll come in and sup with you in the study of my word and in mm. prayer. Mm. And, and you will sup with me. That mm. all of us can attain to actually such a title mm. by becoming so intimate yes. and so close to mm -hmm. God. But if Daniel is receiving an answer to mm. a question he mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. in the book of in the book of um, Revelation chapter 
8 mm -hmm. i mean in daniel chapter 8 mm -hmm. it means now he's receiving something cons concerning what he had already seen the bible says in 24 is that 70 weeks are determined mm -hmm. otherwise translated that 70 weeks are cut off mm -hmm. that out of the bigger vision that you daniel saw of 2300 days we must go there because there is no way gabriel is es explaining something from the blue he's explaining something that has already been introduced to us mm -hmm. which was the 2300 days says Amen. that 70 weeks are determined from the bigger one they are cut off mm -hmm. and these ones what are they determined for? They are upon thy people and upon thy holy city, which we knew is Jerusalem. So mm -hmm. upon the people of Daniel, who are the Jews, to finish this transgression and to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Several things introduced. There are very many things, no time to describe what, what each one of them means, but we know the 70 weeks each day for a year those are 490 years cut mm -hmm. off from the bigger 2300 years mm -hmm. determined for the children of god mm -hmm. i will just make reference to to summarize this in the book of ezekiel ezekiel chapter 21 ezekiel chapter 21 God speaking of what will happen to the children of Israel. I'll read from verse 24. Um, and, 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 and the Bible says, it's as though it's referencing the same thing. The Bible says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you have made your iniquity to be remembered, and in that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings, your sins do appear, because I say that ye are come to remembrance. Ye shall be taken with the hand, and thou profane, wicked prince of Israel. Speaking about the Jews who had been wicked, who had been transgressing, and now they are in captivity. Whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end. You know, God also establishing a time, and then says is this, Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem. And take off the crown, you know, take off the crown of Israel. Mm. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. And then verse 27 says this, I will overturn. God himself says he will overturn the kingdom of Israel. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. Mm. You know, God prophesying of how many times he will overturn them by being ruled by other nations, other kingdoms. We see media coming in, mm -hmm. Grisha coming in, Rome coming in. You know, it says, I will overturn new people until when, Verse, it continues on saying, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is and I will give it to him. And whose right it is, it is the pr true prince of Israel who is Christ himself. He says, mm -hmm. I will overturn you until the whose right it is, he surely comes. And that mm -hmm. is what Daniel chapter 8 verse 24 says, that God has given them 490 years to fill up their transgression, to sin until the brim is full. And then, until whose right it is, until Christ comes, the Bible says, until he anoints the most holy. And so we see God determining that period for the children of Israel until we see Christ coming mm -hmm. in around um, um, 4 AD um, and, and then Christ being, being anointed to start his ministry. Mm -hmm. And then we see now Christ eventually crucified. And over that time, God gives them a short period of time to now confess fully and to come back to him mm -hmm. without which he will destroy the the, the kingdom of um, of Jerusalem and the ch nation of Israel as it were ceases to be and now God spreads the nation to Nini and we saw that happening that the 490 years were completed when eventually Titus came and destroyed the temple in Jerusalem and every every person in Jerusalem was scattered mm -hmm. and the ones who are Christians or the ones who remained were all killed because God had determined a time for them mm -hmm. to repent and to come back to him. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you. Ah, beloved, I know it's a bit heavy, but the Spirit of the Lord is with us and he will help us understand. Amen. Uh, we move to Wednesday, but the Messiah cut off. Um, when you read the book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, it says that, after, and after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. They, those words that the Messiah shall be cut off, you know, people keep misinterpreting, misinterpreting such things, and they just want us to find 
what does what do those words mean are they fulfilled in daniel's prophecy this i think this is a prophecy that is being prof, uh, being said by who by daniel are they being prof, prof, uh, are they being fulfilled and what do they mean what does the phrase cut off mean in daniel chapter 29 verse 26 in relation to the messiah if that is a bit easier <laughs> oh thank you so much thanks mm -hmm. uh so daniel chapter 9 i think just has really uh, given us that context mm -hmm. of the 490 years and what they represent mm -hmm. um uh, we can actually uh, we are told exactly when this 490 year prophecy begins and we know exactly when the Messiah would be cut off based upon the text. So Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 tells us briefly that, uh, that, that from the going forth of the command, the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks plus 62 weeks, that is 69 weeks, which mm. prophetically is um, 483 years. Mm. Yeah, this one, you can do that mathematics for yourself. You can, um, I know if this is a recording you're watching, mm. uh, if you're live streaming, you can just take time, do that calculation, and you come to that exact conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're watching with us live, then you can quickly do the calculation with us. Mm. Um, and you will find that same conclusion, that um, uh, it's 483 years from the com from the, the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. So the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, there were three decrees given to restore um, the temple, uh, um, uh, then to restore, uh, to, 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 to go back and continue the work of restoring the temple, and then the decree given in Ezra chapter 7 mm -hmm. to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, which happened in the seventh year of the reign of, of Ataxaxas. Again, this is historical, so again, you can go and confirm this historically. Uh, this is the year 457 B.C. If you do the quick calculation, 483 years after, we are, given, we are, we are taken to 227 A.D., and we are told there prophetically that this should be the time of the Messiah, mm -hmm. Messiah the Prince, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now, who is Messiah the Prince? Mm -hmm. None other than Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. If you take time to study the book of Luke chapter 3, we are told exactly when Jesus became Messiah that is anointed, because mm -hmm. that's what Messiah means. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, for those of us who are unfamiliar, the word Christ is the Greek of the word Hebrew Messiah, which in English is translated to the anointed one. Now, when was Christ anointed? Um, Acts 10.38, we are told Christ was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, when did that happen historically? In the book of Luke chapter 3, we are told that at his baptism, Christ received the Holy Spirit and was therefore anointed. And in Luke chapter 3, we are told exactly that time. We are told it is in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. And again, go historically and you find this is 27 AD. Now, that means that the Messiah would appear in 27 AD. But then now we are told... After this 27 AD, the Messiah would be cut off. And um, uh, we are told uh, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, uh, I believe it is, that the, mess, th that the, the sacrifice would, would be, would be uh, ceased. Um, let me just get the exact text. In Daniel chapter 9, um, reading in verse uh, 27, mm -hmm. uh, He, the same Messiah, will confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So the Messiah will be cut off, and when he is cut off, we are told, in, in fact, it will be in the middle of that week. So a week has seven days. Mm -hmm. And again, I really apologize for the, a lot of mathematics, but we can follow mm -hmm. along with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in the middle of the week, that's uh, after three and a half years. So seven days is seven years prophetically. Uh, so three and a half years. So after three and a half years from 27 AD, we know that the Messiah would be cut off, mm -hmm. right? Now, we, again, uh, the, 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 some of these things are common knowledge. I know most people know that Christ ministered for how many years? For three, three and a half, and a three half and a half years. years. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, what happened to Christ? He was mm -hmm. crucified. Mm -hmm. And we are told here in Daniel chapter 9 mm -hmm. that the Messiah would be cut off not for himself, mm -hmm. which is precisely what happened. Exactly. And again, this is message that we should always save sinners of whom I am chief. Mm -hmm. That when Christ died, he didn't die for himself. The other thieves on the cross who are dying, them they died because they were transgressors. Mm -hmm. But when Christ died, Christ died for you and for me. So the Messiah was no. the week what happened he caused the sacrifice and the oblation to cease in fact uh, for, for for those of us who have studied the book of matthew chapter 26 we know that there are so many events that transpired when christ died but chief among them was that the temple curtain 
and the temporal curtain is not like that small curtain maybe that you may, you may be thinking about it is a very very thick curtain many 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 layers of, of animal hide uh, of, of animal leather and so imagine that was torn from the top so that's a very very thick curtain torn from the top to the bottom and um, uh, christ uh, uh, um, uh, a symbol from god in heaven to us that that system of sacrifice is over because the last sacrifice, who is Jesus Christ, mm. has died for us. Amen. Yeah. So Thank I think um, mm. that actually gives a full credit mm. that you gave us. Yeah. That that the Messiah being cut off is simply Jesus Christ dying on uh, on, um, uh, on our behalf mm. in the year 31 A.D. Okay, so this was prophesied in Daniel, but fulfilled in the New Testament. Amen. So, Amen. in fact, it gives us so much faith and, and hope that we can actually trust the Word exactly. of God. Exactly. Now that tells us that the Word of God is actually true, so that we can still trust the prophecies that have been said. If this one was fulfilled of Christ dying on the cross, then every other promise, every other prophecy that is mentioned in the Bible will be fulfilled because it is God's Word. Amen. Amen. So now we move to the Thursday because hey, time is not on our side, <laughs> and we go to the famous year 1844, <laughs> and especially to the Adventists. We, we this year is no is that year that all of us just want to understand what happened. And if you haven't yet understood, don't worry because we are here and we are going to study about it. What is the significance of the year 1844 in relation to the 23? 2300 days prophecy, Raphael. First of all, explain to us what happened in 1844. For someone who's hearing or listening to it for the first time, before you relate it to the 2300 days. Ah, indeed. Um, 1844, 1844 as, a, as, a, as we began this lesson, mm. uh, we saw in the 1800s a lot of things were happening. Mm. We saw Darwin developing uh, the theory of evolution mm -hmm. we saw Karl Marx and uh, the communist mm -hmm. communist manifesto we saw Nietzsche and uh, his modern uh, day philosophies and, uh, and 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 psychology and uh, and all those things but in the midst of all this uh, around the 1800s there was also a great awakening among the people of god there was a great was born and it was called the Advent Movement because they looked forward to the second coming of Christ. And they, having considered these texts in, uh, uh, in Daniel 8 and verse 14, and to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, mm -hmm. they saw that the sanctuary, they interpreted that the sanctuary being cleansed as the sanctuary, as the earth here. Mm -hmm. and so there was a movement that calculated the 2,300 days and and uh, and via using that calculation they were able to say that Christ was going to come Christ was going to come in the in 1843 mm. and later on they realized there is no zero year they mm -hmm. 44 mm -hmm. and so throughout the world back then and as much as the devil was stirring the pot and many theories were coming up about, about, uh, 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 around, but we see a lot of uh, Christian movements find their beginnings, their origins around that time. Mm. If you look at even the Jehovah Witnesses, mm. around, it's around that time. Mm. Many things were happening. It was a, it was, it was a stirring pot of, 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 of activity, mm. the 1800s. And so um, there were a group of people who were, who were known as forward to the second advent of Christ. Amen. And um, in 1844, mm. they, they were greatly disappointed. Mm. They were greatly disappointed. And so it's called the Great Disappointment of 1844, October mm. 22nd. Mm. And so um, why, how did they come to this disappointment? How did they come to, to, to their disappointment? One, they were disappointed because of their interpretation of the sanctuary, their understanding of the sanctuary. They mm. mistook the sanctuary here on earth as being the one that was being to be, was being uh, cleansed. Whereas we see and we know that the sanctuary on earth was made after the pattern of the one in heaven. Mm -hmm. So in essence, the sanctuary that was being cleansed was the sanctuary where? In, in heaven. heaven. And so using the 2300-day uh, year prophecy, 2300-day uh, uh, prophecy, using the day year principle, we, get, we understand that these were 2300 years. And we have been given in Daniel chapter 9 from around verse 25, um, we've been given the keys uh, of, 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 of when we begin, verse 24, uh, verse 25, we see that when do we begin counting? And we were told 
and know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And we saw that this commandment was given uh, by uh, 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 King Atasaxes. Mm. And uh, Atasaxes gave this command in the year 457 mm -hmm. BC. Mm. And so uh, using that calculation, they mm. calculated and they got to say that Christ was going to come in 18, 1843. But then they realized there's no zero year. Mm. They added one. So it was 1844. 1844. So they were expecting Christ mm. to come. But Surely we are in the year 2023. Christ hasn't come unless we are in heaven. <laughs> but uh, surely we, we are not. Surely yeah. we are not. Mm -hmm. The very fact that uh, we, are, we are feeling the cold, the very mm -hmm. fact that we are wearing glasses tells us that we are still on earth. Yeah. And so um, the sanctuary that was being cleansed was a sanctuary in heaven. In heaven. heaven. And so what then is the significance of the year 1844? Mm. The year 1844 simply uh, tells us that the work of the cleansing of the sanctuary started. And we said that the work of the cleansing of the sanctuary is connected to the work of what? Mm. Judgment. Mm. The work of judgment. And so um, through prophetic, um, prophetic consideration, God has revealed to us and has shown to us Indeed, when exactly the sanctuary, the cleansing of the sanctuary, the removal of the sins mm. uh, um, from the books uh, of record, from mm. the books in heaven, started. And we're told that this work began uh, in the year 1844. Mm. So the judgment in heaven, um, in the sanctuary in heaven, where Christ himself is doing the work, both mm. high priest mm. and uh, both sacrifice mm. and high priest, doing the work of, of cleansing the sanctuary, removing the record of our sins from mm. there, in as much if we have claimed the merits of his blood, mm. if we, through him, have come to the Father, then the record of our wrongs is, is, is removed, and the work of judgment begin, began in 1844. Indeed, it ties now back to, brings us back to uh, mm. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, mm -hmm. and tells us that the hour of his judgment has, has come. come. The hour of his judgment has come. When did it start? In 1844, 44. when Christ began the work of cleansing the sanctuary. And the work of judgment is, is a work of scrutiny mm. to everybody. Of and so, character. everybody who has ever lived here on mm. earth, everybody mm. who has, uh, who has, uh, who has, uh, has taken breath, mm. and it began with who? It began with Adam mm. uh, and Eve. And so, since 1844, we have this understanding that indeed um, he, Christ has started the work of cleansing the sanctuary and, and, and the judgment is set in heaven mm. and the books are being opened. opened. The judgment mm. was set and the books are being opened. Mm. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 16 says, And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of the transgressions of all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation mm. that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. Mm. And so we see Christ in 1844 began the work of cleansing the heavenly sanctuary and cleansing by, by, by extension, cleansing us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and removing from the books of records uh, the records of our sins. Mm -hmm. And so the question then is um, um, how then was in the Day of Atonement how were the people carrying themselves? Mm -hmm. you know? uh, what was their attitude? And we see in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse uh, uh, 26 to 29 it tells us um, um, about the day of atonement. It says, also on the tenth day, God, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and it shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And it shall do no work in the same day, for it is the day of atonement, to make, a, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Mm. And so, we who are living in the antitypical day of atonement, mm. we are called to a time of self-reflection. It's almost like we are, God now gives us the three angels' messages mm -hmm. as, a, as, as, as a reminder that, hey, wake up, mm. time is embrace gone. the ever mm. everlasting gospel mm. because the hour of his judgment has it's come. Has come. How do we wake up? How do we afflict our souls mm. by embracing the everlasting gospel? Amen. By having a, a living and vital and working relationship with God. Mm. And you know, by being aware 
of the of the times that we're living in by True. being aware mm -hmm. and, and and taking advantage as the doors of, of mercy are still swung wide and, and open for us by entering by faith into communion with Christ and, and into oneness with God mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and and by applying and, and taking upon ourselves the merits of his blood and claiming Amen. the blood of Christ uh, on our behalf. Amen. Uh, that is how we afflict our souls in this day and age. Thank you for that elaborate um, study that you've given us. Now, time is really, really off our side, but there's just a question that I'd ask we answer in one sentence because <laughs> time is off, <laughs> off completely. What can we learn from the nature of prophecy, just from, the stu from studying the book of Daniel? How can this understanding help strengthen our relationship with God? Because Daniel is a whole prophecy. So just understanding, how does that strengthen our relationship with God? Uh, just a minute, because <laughs> time is... Uh, uh, we'll start with Jess. I think if there's confusion in your life regarding a, a, a certain portion of scripture or a certain revelation of God's will in your life, I think seeking God um, in prayer, like mm, Daniel did, yeah. I think God is ready, more than ready and willing to listen. And if you're experiencing tribulation and trial in your life or a time of confusion, God has appointed a time to come and judge and make things clear and make things right. I think we imagine that God has not apportioned a time, but everything has a time that has been apportioned, even for our own tribulation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, so for me, uh, the study of Daniel chapter 8 actually reveals uh, the presence of Jesus and mm. sometimes this is so hidden um, and uh, this is why I like giving maybe some, some small homework go and study that Daniel chapter 8 verse 13 you'll find the one who is called Saturn the one who now answers in Daniel 8 14 what the actual time is his name is Palmone uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 that is the one who is also called Pele wonderful it's the same root of word that same individual Jesus uh, uh, is, uh, who reveals that particular number, that particular date, is the one who has apportioned particular times of, of, of um, uh, the end to tribulation, the end to trial, and the one who will be a blessing in your life. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Raphael. Uh, I think it speaks to us uh, mm -hmm. of uh, ultimate justice. Mm -hmm. we, use, we see, and uh, as we read uh, from history, mm -hmm. uh, that most of these wild powers committed atrocities. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, towards the final end when we talk, when he talks about the religious political power that will reign towards the end that it 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 works strong eastward westward northward and even towards the mm. holy land mm. and even made great challenges against god and it speaks of a, about a time of a time of trouble mm. a time of suffering mm. but ultimately daniel is transported and told don't worry it is only for a time Indeed, it tells us, uh, like Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there is a season mm -hmm. and a time for every and a time and purpose for everything that happens under the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so it simply calls us and encourages us and tells us that uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes, comes in the morning. morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You may have been denied justice here on earth. Somebody may have uh, usurped authority mm -hmm. over you. Mm -hmm. Somebody may have loaded it over you, and, uh, and you may have... We may, we may have been victimized here on earth, but God mm -hmm. is saying a day is coming in which he has appointed the judgment. Mm -hmm. And uh, in heaven, we are told that the judgment has already been set and it's already happening. It is for us to afflict our souls by daily devotion to God, by a, a life of prayer, by a life of Bible study, by a life of confession, by a life of inviting the Holy Spirit to walk with us and to guide us, to be our guide here on earth and to have a relationship with God. And uh, we know that eventually he will balance the books and uh, he shall come and met out judgment. He will fight for us. Thank you. Amen, amen. I'll just finish by reading the first, our memory text, uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12. And do this knowing that the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer, nearer than when we first believed. The night is first spent, the day is our time. Amen. Brethren, there is no time. Uh, literally speaking, there is no time. And unless Christ intercedes, things will keep getting bad, harder, and tougher every other day. Which side are you on? Our study has been the hour of his judgment. It is nearer. And as we have learned, it's, the books are already open. And it is continuing to 
like God is already doing his judgment right from Adam until you and every human so long as you've had the everlasting gospel you'll be subjected to this judgment the hour of his judgment is nigh thank you so much my panelists for taking us through this study and I'll ask just to close for us with a word of prayer our dear heavenly father we thank you for the promise of the judgment to come we pray, dear Lord, that you may help us to live our lives in accordance to your ways of truth and righteousness, so that, Lord, when we are judged, you may be found to be just and we may be found to be righteous, that indeed we may obtain the eternal life that you have promised for us. I pray that, Lord, if there is any person who is going through any trial and tribulation in their life, that, Lord, your light will come to them and strength will be given to them to endure, O oh God, during this time and to have patience to wait for your judgment and for your vindication. This is our prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.